Here is video part two of the 1969 Zenith model Z4507. If you recall from part one, the CRT displayed very short vertical sweep. And that needs to be corrected. We weren't able to adjust it with the vertical size and linearity controls. We were a little short on the bottom. And what we're going to do, we're just going to do some troubleshooting in the vertical output circuit and pinpoint where the troublemaker part is. And here we use old technology in conjunction with new technology, the ESR meter. There is a perfect combo for troubleshooting TVs right there. So the first thing we want to do is get a little familiar with the circuit. Let's take a look. Well here's the vertical output tube. That's the socket we're looking at below. And here's some of the associated circuitry. Now let's take a look at the schematic. This is a 16 Z8C50 chassis. Here's the vertical output circuit. We know the vertical output circuit's the troublemaker because the oscillator is working well. We know the oscillator works well because the vertical hold control is in its mechanical mid-rotation and the picture locks great. So we don't have to worry about messing around with the 6BA11 circuit. So let's take a look at some voltages here. What are we going to look for? Well, the plate voltage should be 346 volts, which is pin 6. The control grid, we're looking at minus 10.5 volts. That's coming from the feedback loop from the oscillator. I don't think we need to worry about that, like I said, because everything's working fine in the oscillator. But we should check it anyway. It is going to the output tube. And we also want to check pin 10, 325 volts. Now let's take a look. We got a couple electrolytics in the circuit there. So those are definitely uh, some attention marks right there. And also here in the cathode, we got a 150. Those lytics do need to be checked. So let's take a look at our voltages and see what we come up with. I'm going to try to keep this video under 10 minutes because YouTube limits 10 minute videos which is kind of unfortunate I got my RCA volt meter all warmed up, it's a VTVM Okay, there you go. That's what we got so far. That's pretty bad. Now let's check this out. Turn the volume down. Let's check pin 6. If you recall, it was 346 volts. VTVM is centered. On zero, we're on 500 volt range. Let's go to pin six. Right here. Coming out of the vertical output transformer, I can test it right up here. 350 volts. That's fine. Plate circuit's good. So that means it's what's feeding the grid circuit. It's got to be the troublemaker here. Let's check pin number two. Change our polarity. Change our voltage, because now we got to read minus ten and a half volts. Okay, that's going to be pin two. So let's check pin two. Okay. That's not too bad. We're looking at about yeah, 16 volts. We're within we're within tolerance. We didn't see anything drastically different. And let's now check pin 10. Here we want 325 volts. 
Here I could check that right on this capacitor. That wire goes right to pin 10. We want 325. This is the highest reading of them all. We're looking at 345 volts. We want 325 volts, so we're 20 volts high. That's starting to get a little cautious right there. Well, let's go back and look at the schematic. What's going on at pin 10? We're high. Well, there's an electrolytic right there. Now it's possible that cap's open. And if that cap's open, the voltage is going to raise. So let's disconnect the set and let's check the ESR on that capacitor. C115. It's a 10 microfarad at 475. Let's zero out the meter. Ten at four seventy five, we should have an ESR of greater than six ohms according to the scale. I got absolutely no reading at all on this capacitor. And I'm making good contact. Totally bone dry. Now Granted, since this is a video, this has been kind of pre-done, but the same procedure would have followed. Here's my replacement capacitor. Check the ESR on this. That's a good capacitor. It's about 0.82. It doesn't matter if it's a little lower than what the chart says. It's a very rough guideline. It's not a leaky cap either. So let's plug the set back in. Let's connect our jumper leads to the cap. Since this cap is open, jumpering it is going to be telling us if this is going to be the cure or not. If it was a leaky cap, this would be an inconclusive test because it's basically like a short circuit. What good is jumping the cap? Right. Okay, we got short vertical sweep still. Now let's jump the cap. Look what just happened. Let's hook up the antenna real quick. Um, because I live upstairs. <laughs> there you go. We just filled up the vertical all the way. Well, let's disconnect it once. We're back to where we were. There's the troublemaker. The four, the 10 microfarad at 475. Now that the set's working, let's check our voltage. Go to a no signal condition. And let's go back to pin 10. The cap's in place. We're a lot better now. Look at that. Perfect. 325 volts as called out by the schematic. So all we got to do is just replace that capacitor, put the set back together, check the convergence, and it should be a done deal. That's my kind of repair. A quick and easy one. And it's even easier because that capacitor is the easiest one in the world to change. It's right in the open. You don't have to worry about hitting anything with your soldering iron or any of that. So there you have it. So stay tuned and keep watching for more TV repair videos.